So now we move on to the twip steels. Now twip as the name suggests refers to the twinning induced plasticity steels. The first of all while discussing about its composition we find that the twip steels are very high manganese steels because they have the 17 to 24 percent of manganese by weight whereas the amount of carbon contained in twip steels is uh, between 0.5 to 1.5 percent by weight. Now if we uh, just want to know about the history of the twip steels then we can find that the original austenitic manganese steel containing about 1.2 percent by weight of carbon and 12 percent by weight of manganese developed by Sir Robert Hatfield in 1882 also called the Hatfield steel had high toughness, high ductility, good wear resistance and high work hardening capacity. A subgroup of carbon free twip steels with slightly lower strength was termed as the LIP that is the light induced plasticity steels. High manganese austenitic steels possess the highest product of strength and ductility, normally above 50,000 megapascal percent. And as the applied strength increases, the volume fraction of twins also increases, thereby steadily dividing the grains into smaller fragments that effectively reduce the glide distance for the dislocations. The phenomena is called the dynamic hall patch behavior, resulting in high strain hardening and thereby explaining the high product of strength and ductility in twip steels. Then mechanical twins formed during deformation due to low stacking fault energy or the SFE as a result of which effective grain diameter of austenite decreases besides some reports suggest that SFE stacking fault energy required for the twip effect to be uh, should be within the range of 20 to 50 millijoule per square meter. Minimum F SFE value may be related to the suppression of ethermal austenite to epsilon martensite transformation. Then, the, gen then generally the value of SFE required to initiate the deformation by twinning is not sufficient and activation of dislocation gliding may be hampered. Experimental measurement of SFE with good accuracy using TEM is very difficult due to insignificant interaction volume of TEM specimen and so SFE is mostly measured using various thermodynamic concepts. With all other conditions kept constant, the lower SFE leads to higher density of strain induced twins which ultimately results in higher strain hardening. Deformation of the twip steels as in low SFE FCC alloys occurs by a competition between the slip dislocation, deformation twinning and austenite to martensitic transformation which should be mostly suppressed in automotive grades of twip steels. Then dislocation slip occur occurs during early stage of deformation with deformation twinning becoming active after a threshold level of strain has been reached. Strain induced twins formed due to low stacking fault energy gradually reduce the effective dislocation of slip distance. With additional strain, wavy slip is promoted which leads to dislocation configurations progressively refined as applied stress increases. Nucleation of deformation twins requires critical dislocation density. Activation of deformation twinning raises strain hardening of the alloy even further, thereby enhancing its ductility. Now secondary twin system may act to trigger intensive twin intersections for the strain hardening the alloy. Here the yield strength and tensile strength increase with decrease in grain size which is according to that is the dependence of yield strength with uh, grain size is, uh, is revealed by the hall page behavior. Okay. Number of deformation twins increases with grain size leading to greater twip effect in coarse grain than in fine grain material. This may be attributed to grain size dependence of critical stress for onset of deformation twinning. Now jerky serrated flow during tensile test of iron manganese carbon twip steels is typically observed which is explained by the formation of Potevin Lee Chatelier's bands or the PLC bands whose underlying mechanism is the dynamic strain aging or the DSA which is based on actually based on dynamic interactions between the mobile dislocations and the diffusing solute atoms. 
Now, I would like to uh, uh, to reveal the references from which the presentation has been made. A lecture on trip and trip steals by Dr. V. Subramanya Sharma, and a brief introduction uh, to IF, DP, and BH steals by Dr. Peter D. Hodson. In order to know more about these uh, types of steals, you may uh, consult uh, these uh, lectures. And finally, I thank all of you for your patience and endurance. Hope you enjoyed the presentation.